Hello and welcome back to NV Fine Art Studio. To have the glow, the light that bursts from your painting is one of the main desires every artist strives for. It is something that evokes awe and makes the viewer stop and stare at your painting. It is something that when you are a beginner you dream to achieve but it doesn't happen no matter what you try. I hope that today I can help you to take a few more steps in the right direction to be closer to this magic that occurs on the paper. The concepts are actually quite simple, much simpler than everyone makes of it, but you definitely need practice to actually fully understand it. Understand and remember it with your hands, not just with your mind. And also develop muscle memory, because usually there is no time to think when you paint. The holy grail concept that 99% of beginners are aware of, but ignore when painting. There is no light without the dark. If you want to paint glowing light, you need to have a full range of values in your painting. Let's paint a cube in a way that it shows the light. Here's your light wash. Can you see glowing light? No. Here's your second wash. Can you see it now? Not really. Although it looks a little more dimensional now. Here's your darkest wash. Can you see it now? Not really, again. In reality, I used only light tonal values. Here, this is tonal value 2, this is 3, and this is 4. Let's do it now with a full range of values. Here's your first wash. Here's your second wash. And here's the darkest darks. What a difference, huh? Use full range of values. There is no way around it. But this only gives you a good sense of 3D. It doesn't make the light look like it's glowing. What to do next? Let's pay attention to this cloud. How is it possible? that we have a good range of values in this area but the light doesn't glow although in this area very similar range of values but the light actually glows i would be very interested to know your first thought let's do our first giveaway shall we if you write your answer in the comments in the description down below, it doesn't have to be a correct answer, just something you first thought that makes this area glow. At the end of July, I'll do a random draw from all the comments below and I'll send one of my favorite tubes of Holbein lavender to the lucky person. The answer is the difference in edges. To create a sense of glowing light, you need to have soft edges in this area. Let me show you how to achieve this when you paint. First, I want to show it to you on the example of the same cube. I do the same first and second wash, but I'm going to soften a few edges here. Now I'm going to do the third wash, the darkest darks, and also going to soften a few edges. Here's the difference side by side and I don't think I even have to say anything here. Let's paint the sky with clouds and I'll show you three examples of how to achieve soft edges in desired areas. First example is softening edges with clean damp brush. We're going to start with a warm light wash. This is a mix of yellow ochre and cadmium red light and we are painting wet on dry. So there is no moisture on the paper except the wash. Next I add cool gray mixture to the bottom two thirds of the clouds. This is wet on wet so it's important that your second mixture, the grey mixture, is actually a little drier in comparison to the yellow mixture. 
Then I add the darkest value, the darkest cool wash to the bottom one third of the clouds. And at last I paint the sky a little darker at the top and a little lighter closer to the horizon. The most important part here is to preserve part of the paper around the clouds. This is the part where we will be softening with a clean damp brush. Now the softening part. So I make sure that my brush is clean. I rinse it really well. Then I remove excess of water on the tissue and carefully with the tip of the brush I soften the edges. Not everywhere, just in desired areas where I want to achieve the glow. Here's the finished result. The second option to achieve soft edges is to pre-wet the area with a spray bottle. This usually gives you random areas of wet surface and gives you a good variation of lost and found. First step is to spray the area with a spray bottle, but make sure you don't flood the area, just a few areas of wet surface. Then the process is pretty much the same first, light warm wash, then dropping a bit of grey and finishing with a darker cool grey wash at the bottom. And the final step is the gradient wash for the sky, darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. And again, at this point it is very important to leave a little bit of the white of the paper. This is what creates the glow. And some areas will merge with the yellow of the clouds and some areas will stay as a sharp edges. This is due to the randomness of the spray. And here's the finished result. The next option is painting wet on wet, but it will give you equally soft edges everywhere. But besides that, the process is pretty much the same. But just remember that when you paint wet on wet, because you already have some moisture on the paper, the paint will dry lighter, so you need to make your mixtures a little bit more saturated with paint. Also, it's quite important when you paint the sky to leave quite a bit of white of the paper in between the blue sky and yellow clouds. So you need quite a bit of white of the paper that area because the paint, um, the surface is wet and the paint under the gravity drops down and easily merges with the clouds. So you need to allow at least five to maybe seven millimeters in between the um, yellow clouds and blue sky. If at the end you feel like you lost too much white of the paper and there is not enough glow, that's okay. You can always leave the paint with a clean damp brush. This part is actually really easy to do when you paint wet on wet, but just make sure that the brush is relatively dry. If your brush is too moist, if there is too much moisture in your brush, you actually may end up with creating cauliflowers instead of creating highlights. Here they are, three examples side by side. In my opinion, softening edges is the easiest and the most controlled technique, but if you are after a more spontaneous and expressionistic feel in your painting, you will eventually want to try and let the control go and enjoy when watercolor paints itself. Nothing is cleaner and looks more natural, looks like it's not painted, it's just there, is when watercolor paints itself. Okay, we talked about values, we talked about edges, and now is the last point, and in my opinion is the hardest in regards to the technique. If you're a beginner, I would not stress too much on it and just focus on the full range of values and variation in edges, but if you're intermediate and has a bit of experience, this is probably the next step to perfect. In addition to full range of values and soft edges, you also need to make sure there is a temperature gradient happening in your wash. We all know that light is waves and they are the strongest near the source of light and weaken away from the source. If the source of light is natural, such as sun, or similar to natural, and by natural I mean it's not green or violet or things like that, 
The area closer to the light will be warmer and brighter, and away from it will be cooler and darker. Here's an example. This is one of my recent demos on Patreon, the horse. If you look at the jawline, the cheek is very light. Then it fades away to orange and red, and then eventually into middle and dark cool tones. And this is relevant to all washes and tonal values you do. Every wash, either it's the first wash, the first light wash, or second middle, or dark values, they all need to have gradient. Here's an example of a stone column. We don't have a huge contrast here and we don't have softness in edges. But just because we have a subtle variation from warm light to cool dark, it already appears glowy. The gradient on the right is all cool. There is no warm tone there at all. And in comparison to the one on the left, it doesn't shine as much. If you're not sure what I talk about when I say gradient, let me quickly show you how to achieve it when you paint it. I'm going to exaggerate it a little more on this example. So first we need to start with a light warm wash. Then I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and I'm going to use the help of gravity. I'm going to add a little bit more warmth here to exaggerate it a little bit and more water as well just to make sure that it flows with the help of gravity. Now little by little I am adding cooler tones such as sepia, ultramarine and neutral tint. But I'm doing it very gradually to make sure that we have a nice gradient in this wash. Now I'm going to add middle value, gray tone, and this is a warmer gray tone. This is like a violety brownish gray tone. And now I'm going to add more ultramarine to the mixture and I'm going to add a slightly darker and slightly cooler wash like that. And this is the darkest area of our graded wash. Because I want to exaggerate it for you a little bit more, I'm going to add even darker value right to the middle to make sure there is an effect of a 3D shape. When I'm happy with the contrast and with the range of tonal values, I'll leave it be for a while so it paints itself with the help of gravity. I turn this back to vertical position and now I'm painting the background. An interesting thing that, for example, when I'm painting the background in a warm tone, just a warm tone, it doesn't glow by itself. But as soon as I add a bit of coolness into this warmth, there is an appearance of a glowing background as well. Here I am adding a few more shadows to suggest the stones and softening a few edges to increase the sense of light in this object. And here we are the finished stone column painted using temperature gradient. Hope all the things we talked about today were helpful and I hope this demo was informative and enjoyable. If so, please like and subscribe and don't forget about the giveaway and post your comments below. Also, if you want to practice more on full-scale paintings, please find me on Patreon, the link will be in the description below. This is all for now, until my next video, bye!